research and discovery. Futurists. Daybreak over the cove of Saumur near Marseille in southern France. But beyond the calm and tranquility of this seemingly idyllic setting, there's pressure, stress and fatigue. The dozen or so people making an early start at this small port are working against the clock. They're scientists and they're not here on a pleasure trip. We're going back to the site and we hope we'll be able to wrap things up today. We've had a few technical problems, but we think everything will be OK. They're computer experts and archaeologists from France, Italy and Portugal, working on a European research project called Venus. As their research vessel, the Minibex, makes way, engineers and technicians make last-minute checks on a submarine and an ROV, or remotely operated vehicle. Today's mission is far from simple. The aim is to develop a technique so we can reconstruct an ancient wreck in three dimensions, a virtual wreck. After an hour's steaming, they lower the submarine Remora over the side. It takes about 15 minutes to reach its goal, deep below the surface. It's the wreck of a Roman cargo ship called a Corbita. Archaeologists think the ship sank around 2,100 years ago after hitting a nearby reef. They reckon it was loaded with up to 3,000 amphorae, full of Tuscan wine, bound for Marseille. Wrecks of commercial Roman boats transporting wine or any other goods are really important to us. Understanding the structure of these wrecks will help us determine what kind of amphorae they had on board and how many. It'll help us establish trading patterns in the Mediterranean during Roman times, especially to the west in countries like Italy, France and Spain. This is commercial history, but the history of trading will lead to a better understanding of cultural exchanges within the Roman Empire. Beyond a depth of 60 meters, the risks are too high for divers to carry out underwater archaeology. This wreck lies well beyond that limit, at 105 meters. So until now, the archaeologists have had to rely solely on standard two-dimensional photos and video images. In a digital model, everything's constructed to the nearest centimetre, so I could measure the distance between two objects, overall distance and the overall volume of the load. I could count all the amphorae, and as the degree of accuracy is important, I could even look for clues which could help me identify one amphora from another. For example, the style of the potter, the thumb marks of the maker. It would be a virtual reality model, which I could use as if it were real. But the expedition's goal of creating a 3D virtual model has proved extremely elusive. It's their fifth day of trying, and time is running out. Their efforts on previous days were thwarted by a myriad small but vital technical problems, like a failure of the underwater camera's flash guns. By mid-morning, with flash power restored, the submarine operators begin photographing the wreck, systematically shooting each area from at least three different angles to allow a detailed 3D reconstruction. And for extra accuracy, positional data are embedded on each image. When the submarine operator takes a photograph, the camera records different navigation data, like latitude, longitude, depth below the surface and height above the wreck for each image. These data are essential for the 3D reconstruction. Once we know how the photographic apparatus was positioned in each picture, we can completely transform those details. The signals from global positioning satellites can't penetrate this deep, so this is a complex marriage of computer data and human craftsmanship. 
and the images are further enhanced with sonar. We're trying to merge data from the acoustic and optical sensors, knowing that light travels badly through water. You can photograph something up to three meters away, but, but no further. On the other hand, sound travels through water really well. So on this site, we're trying to gather the sound waves which will rebound from the seabed. Sonar gives us very accurate dimensional information, a flurry of measurements which on the one hand will place us very precisely over the site, but also by moving away vertically from the submarine a little, we can get an image of the area around the site. After three hours of intense, precise underwater photography, the submarine resurfaces. By mid-afternoon, the computer scientists get their hands on the submarine's camera. They've designed a program to arrange all the photos in order according to the navigation data. Then to complete the image, they have to mix in the sonar information. Such is the complexity of the process that it takes around two hours to transfer all the data and make the calculations. It's a tense time for the technicians and the archaeologists, but by early evening, the first three-dimensional photo mosaic and 3D graphic appear on the screen. Mission accomplished. The technique works. We've done it. We've been able to create in real time a 3D photo mosaic of more than 600 photos in a kind of collage that will provide two key benefits to underwater archaeologists. Firstly, because it's in real time, we can return to take more photos the same day if we need to, not one or two days later. That saves us time and money. And secondly, working in real time with the archaeologists, they take a look at the 3D photo mosaic and they can decide, for instance, to concentrate on an area of the shipwreck that looks more promising to them. With this first reconstruction, I can already create an image. I can take each of these amphorae in the photos and make comments, adding a little knowledge and starting my first archaeological report on the site. That's what these images do. And the second stage will not only be about the images, but the volume. Then I'll be in the virtual world in relief. In the end, there's a lot more to do. The challenge now is to produce more realistic graphics so the underwater archaeologists can work without even getting their feet wet.